Hi everybody, my name is Ben. I work for the Game House and today we're going to be talking about which team has the advantage at each position in Super Bowl 57. Alright, let's not waste anybody's time. Let's get right into it. The Eagles are playing the Chiefs in Super Bowl 57. Currently, you can get the Eagles at about uh, minus one and a half. Basically, a pick em game. So if you're going to bet this Super Bowl, you need to look at each position and who do you think will win at each position. So, let's start out with the quarterbacks. Obviously, you got Patrick Mahomes, who's dealing with an ankle, versus Jalen Hurts, who's dealing with a shoulder. I don't think there's much debate here. Uh, Patrick Mahomes is one of the top three quarterbacks in the league, no matter how you slice it. He is dealing with an ankle, like I said. Uh, he should be healthier this week but it could still limit his mobility. And with the Eagles' ability to rush the passer, he's going to need to move around. So it really depends on how how you think that ankle is going to be. Um, but like I said, it should be doing better. And then Jalen Hurts is dealing with a shoulder. Uh, these are the top two MVP candidates if anyone voted for Jalen Hurts. Uh, not only would I not be surprised, I wouldn't blame anybody, but he hasn't had to throw a lot in the playoffs. Clearly, I think he's still hurting. He's letting everyone know about it, and he's going to have to throw the ball a little bit when you look at how the Chiefs are going to play this game and try and stop the run. He's going to have to throw a little bit, test that injured and young Chiefs secondary. Do you think the shoulder's going to hold up? But I think Patrick Mahomes has has the edge here pretty easily. If you want to look at the backups, because both of these quarterbacks are injured, uh, you got Chad Henney versus Gardner Minshew. Now, Gardner Minshew's a good story. Um, there's that insane tale about him beating his own hand with a hammer just so he could redshirt or something along those lines. And then Chad Henney's just a consummate backup professional. If you want to look at the backups, I got to give Chad Henney the edge here too. Uh, considering he played in playoff games before, sort of come in, led touchdown drives. Uh, he had that big fourth down conversion against the Cleveland Browns in the divisional rounds just a few years ago. So I'm going to give Chad Henney the edge here too, although Gardner Minshew has big playability. I don't I don't think anyone's going to question that. Moving along, we got wide receivers. I'm just going to run through them here. For the Chiefs, you have Justin Watson, Marquez Valdez-Scantling, Kadarius Toney, Juju Smith-Schuster, and Sky Moore. And for the Eagles, you have Quez Watkins, Devontae Smith, Zach Pascal, Britton Covey, and A.J. Brown. Another easy one. Devontae Smith and A.J. Brown are good enough to put the Eagles on top right away. Juju Smith-Schuster is fine. Kadarius Toney is good, but he has been injured and re-injured himself in the AFC Championship game. And Justin Watson and Marquez Valdez-Scantling, they're more big play threats. And as a Packers fan, I can tell you, after Marquez Valdez-Scantling has a big game, he is very liable to drop some balls. Drops have haunted him throughout his entire career. And Justin Watson can sneak behind the defense, but I'm not expecting too much from him. Tony Schuster and Moore are more possession receivers. Sky Moore is going to play uh, maybe even behind the line of scrimmage. Um, but Devontae Smith and A.J. Brown, their big playability. Devontae is so fast. A.J. Brown is so big. Even if they're being covered, that means both of them are going to be double covered, which allows Quez Watkins to uh, get out and rack up some yardage. So that's a, another pretty easy one. Moving along with the trend tight ends, also pretty easy. Travis Kelsey uh, Noah Gray and Jody Fortson and Blake Bell for the Chiefs. You got Dallas Goddard, Jack Stoll, and Grant Calcaterra for the Eagles. Travis Kelsey is second in all-time postseason catches. Already had a Gronk. Um, people are saying that another Super Bowl and another big game might put him ahead of Gronk all-time in tight end rankings, despite his inability to block. But just for that reason alone, you have to give it to Travis Kelsey. I like Dallas Goddard. I like his ability but Travis Kelsey is pretty great, and uh, his ability to draw double teams could, I don't know, open it up for someone like Blake Bell, who has also been able to score. So we're going to give the Chiefs the edge there. This one's a little more difficult. We're going to talk about running backs now. Running backs for the Chiefs, you got Isaiah Pacheco, the rookie, Jarek McKinnon, Ronald Jones, and Clyde Edwards-Alaire. For the Eagles, you have Miles Sanders, Kenneth Gainwell, Boston Scott, and Trey Sermon, who... I'm willing to bet mostly you didn't know Trey Sermon was even on the Eagles. As far as pure talent and sort of draftability, 
I think the Chiefs have the edge there. Uh, Jarek McKinnon was great in the last month of the season. Isaiah Pacheco has been streaky, but he's still been good. Ronald Jones, you know, has playing time with playoff Lenny, Leonard Fournette. And then Clyde Edwards-Hilaire has been in and out of the lineup. He's been injury prone, but he has shown flashes also. As, As far as raw talent and things you think you could coach up, the Chiefs have the edge. But with the schemes and the running game, Miles Sanders, Kenneth Gainwell, and Boston Scott, they have the edge there. The running scheme for the Eagles is so unstoppable and it's been such their identity that it really doesn't matter who's carrying the ball. And that's why it's hard to pick between these running backs. I think I'm going to have to give the edge to the Eagles even though their running back talent isn't as, like I said, it's not as draftable. Uh, It doesn't really show up in the intangibles. The Chiefs definitely have the edge in the intangibles. But just with this scheme and with everything that they've been doing all season, I think the running game for the Eagles is just more dangerous regardless of who's lining up. The offensive line, also a tough one because the Chiefs have put a lot of money and a lot of effort into rebuilding their offensive line since it was completely decimated by injury and then decimated by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers last time they were in the Super Bowl. You've got Nick Allegretti, Andrew Wiley, Joe Thune, who's really great. Trey Smith, Lucas Niang, Prince Tega Winogo, Darian Kennard, Orlando Brown, and Creed Humphrey. All those are great names. So, it's just a solid offensive line altogether. But when you look at the Eagles' offensive line um, comprised of Jack Driscoll, Jordan Mailata, Lane Johnson, Andre Dillard, Jason Kelsey, Isaac Sumalo, Landon Dickerson, and Cam Jurgens. You have multiple Hall of Famers on this offensive line. Jason Kelsey's obviously going to be a Hall of Famer. Lane Johnson doesn't even give up pressures, and he's injured. He has a groin injury. He hasn't given up a sack in, I think, almost two years. And when you look at everything around them and just the communication and how this how this offensive line fits as a unit, I'm going to give this one to the Eagles as well. It's It's close to a wash, but it's not a wash, I think. The way that these Hall of Famers on this offensive line play and the communication and the coaching, you're going to have to give it to them, even though the Chiefs' offensive line is more than solid. Uh, Now on to some more easy ones. You've got defensive line followed by linebackers. I'm going to spare you the entire list of defensive line uh, and linebacker players in this matchup, but some of the standouts for the Chiefs are Carlos Dunlap, Derek Nottie, Chris Jones, and Frank Clark, and for the Eagles, you have Indomitian Sue, Javon Hargrave, Jordan Davis, Fletcher Cox, Brandon Graham, Robert Quinn, Josh Sweat. That's almost all of them. So the defensive line matchup, as we know, the Eagles have four players with over 10 sacks on this team. Defense and rushing the passer has been a big part of this Eagles team uh, identity uh, throughout the entire season. And when you're looking at the linebackers, standouts for the Chiefs are Willie Gay, Uh, Leo Chanel and Nick Bolton. Nick Bolton hails from my home state, Missouri, so shout out there. And then for the Eagles, you got Hassan Reddick, Nicobe Dean, TJ Edwards. For both of these, you have to go Eagles. There's just, I know Frank Clark and Carlos Dunlap and Chris Jones are great, but you can't argue with a defensive line and linebacker core that has four 10-sack players among them. So both of those are going to go to the Eagles. Now let's look at the secondary. I have put all defensive backs into uh, into one category here. Legereus Sneed is playing for the Chiefs. Uh, he passed his uh, concussion protocol. Trent McDuffie and Jalen Watson are both rookies. They're both playing Juan Thornhill, Justin Reed, um, among others. And for the Eagles, Darius Slay, Avante Maddox. You got uh, James Bradbury, C.J. Gardner-Johnson, and Reed Blankenship, among others. Um, this one's also going to go to the Eagles. Uh, Legereus Sneed, as I said, is playing. He has cleared concussion protocol, and they need him big time. Will he be 100%? Probably, but there's a chance he won't be, or if he takes a scary hit, he'll come out right away. Trent McDuffie and Jalen Watson have been sort of holding their own. This Chiefs passing defense is definitely vulnerable. You have big play Slay on the other side, C.J. Gardner-Johnson, who's also been injured but is back and playing well. Reed Blankenship, who played for C.J. Gardner-Johnson. And Avante Maddox, of course. This one will also go to the Eagles. I think think it's definitely going to be a bigger test. I don't really think that the Eagles 
pass defense have has been well tested throughout this season. They've played about five or six above average quarterbacks all year, and that includes during the playoffs. But they are more prepared to deal with Patrick Mahomes than most other secondaries, even though they haven't been tested. And again, you could, if you want to argue that the Chiefs are going to have the edge here because Jalen it because Jalen Hurts isn't going to throw the ball as much, I would let you try and talk me into that. But for now, I'm going to go with the Eagles in the secondary. And then finally, we have special teams. So let's just look at it one by one. Harrison Butker versus Jake Elliott. This is almost a wash. I'm not quite going to give it a wash, but it's almost a wash. Harrison Butker has been injured and, you know, we've seen him miss kicks. Jake Elliott's been almost automatic, but these are two... These are two really good kickers. I don't I don't I don't really think anyone's going to lobby too hard for one being that much better than the other. Punting is interesting. You got Tommy Townsend who's absolutely one of the best punters in the league and then Brett Kern who does anyone know what he looks like? Has anyone really seen him punt this year? If the Eagles are anywhere near midfield and it's 4th and 2, 4th and 3 or shorter, they are going to trust this offensive line. They're going to trust Jalen Hurts. They're going to trust their running backs. They're going to go for it. Brett Kern's not going to get a lot of snaps in this game. I, I fully believe that if they're anywhere near the logo in the middle of the field, that they're going to be going for it uh, unless it's unless it's fourth and four or longer. I'm going to give the Chiefs the edge on punter, but will it really matter if the Eagles are picking up those uh, fourth and short plays. Um, let's look at the kickoff and punt returns just very quickly. Uh, for the kickoff returns, the Chiefs average 19.2 yards uh, per return and the Eagles average 22.1. So that's close, but those three yards, again, could make the difference given that the Eagles like to go for it so much on fourth and short. Uh, punt returns, uh, the Chiefs were actually uh, one of the worst teams in the league on punt returns averaging only 6.7 yards. The Eagles weren't demonstratively better, but they did have 9.2 yards per return on average uh, this season. You have to give the Eagles the edge there, but I'm going to go ahead and call special teams a complete wash. I'm not even going to I'm not even really sure it's going to matter that much. I'm not going to I'm not really sure we're going to see them that much in this game. It could be a defensive struggle. I could be very wrong. We could be seeing the Chiefs special teams a lot more as the Eagles defensive line and linebackers get that pressure, but we can just call this one a wash just just for fairness' sake. So there you have it. There are all of the positional advantages and disadvantages for Super Bowl 57. If you were going to bet the Super Bowl, I would I would take these advantages into account. It should be a good game though. It could go either way, although I have the Eagles edging out the Chiefs in these positional advantages. But yeah, thanks for watching. Be sure to stay tuned to the Game House and, and check us out for all your Super Bowl coverage needs ahead of the big game on Sunday. Thanks again.